Honey, I think we need some new dish towels. These are looking kind of sad over here. New dish towels? Didn't we just buy those? That was 13 years ago. Those were wedding presents from William Sonoma. Remember? Exactly. So we should be able to get a few more years out of them. But these are literally falling apart here. I'm not buying new William Sonoma dish towels. Do you know how expensive those are? Okay, how about Bed Bath & Beyond, Walmart, somewhere else? Honey, we're homesteaders. We don't buy anything at the stores anymore. And don't forget our family motto, use it up, wear it out, make do or do without. We've definitely worn these out and used them up, but I'm not going without dish towels. Couldn't you maybe make some? Pretty please? <sighs> Fine, I'll just go make some more. What colors do you want? Red and white, please. Dish towels. Here's your dish towels. Ooh, pretty. Can you make me another set? I just made you a set. You're literally holding them. Yes, but these are my fancy dish towels. These are for decoration only. Hey, it's Jake with the Roaming Homesteaders. We wanted to show you one of the skills that we think are, are essential for the, the modern homestead. This is something that a lot of people don't do anymore, um, but I still think it's really cool and I think it's, it's easy to learn and it's something that everyone can really benefit by. And that is weaving your own uh, things. I mean, it could be dish towels like we're gonna show you today, or it can be scarves or fabric or clothing elements. This is something that I picked up here back in about December of 2021 toward the tail end of the pandemic. And I had an opportunity to get a hold of a table loom. And I just jumped in, I started making scarves and then I eventually graduated to other things. And, and now I wanna show you my uh, latest set of uh, tea towels. I'm gonna to show you just the process that goes into doing this. A lot of it's gonna be fast forwarded um, I don't know how much commentary I'm going to put in. This isn't necessarily a how-to how video. There's lots of how-to videos out there. Um, I recommend, uh, well, I can give recommendations down below for anyone who's interested in learning how to weave. There's a couple of sites that I highly recommend. We're going to go ahead and show you what we're doing. Again, this isn't going to be uh, a step-by-step. -step. It's more just going to be sort of a sped-up version of how I made these particular towels. You're not going to see the whole process, but you're going to see highlights of every step. And then we're going to go and show you the results. One of the first steps in weaving is what we call warping. Uh, for those Star Trek fans out there, we're not talking about warp speed, but we're talking about uh, aligning a bundle of strings in a way that we can actually keep track of the overlaps and get it strung onto uh, a loom without getting everything tangled. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to measure the length of our piece, and in this case it's 155 inches, and we're going to put a guide string on the back, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to string going up and back the entire length, uh, the number of strings that I need in order to make the width of the piece that I'm putting on this on this loom. So for these tea towels, we're going to be doing 409 strings. That's going to take a while. We're going to speed this up a bit so you can see it, but. Uh, basically, we weave this, we don't weave this, we string this over the pegs uh, in a pattern going up and back over and under a certain set of pegs at the top there that creates an overlap so that if we put something in that, in that cross that's created there, uh, we can always keep track of all the strings without them getting tangled. We can take them off this board and transfer them to a loom and then we can do what we need to do next. So. Uh, go ahead and take a peek as I get all these 409 strings lined up. This takes about uh, 
two and a half hours. So you're only getting a little glimpse of it, but we're gonna go there now and you'll get to see a little bit of the warping process. Now that we've uh, warped up our, our chain, we now call it a chain because when you take it off the warping board it ends up looking like a chain of yarn. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our loom inside the house and we're going to, what we're going to call, it's called dressing the loom. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the chain on and we're going to stretch it out and then we're going to actually pull it through the heddles which are all these little white strings uh, on the loom. And, and by putting it in the heddles in a certain order, you can create patterns in your cloth. So this particular, this particular uh, towel set is based off of, it's called Rose Path Twill, which creates sort of little diamond pattern. Uh, but if you do it a certain way, you can also get the classic chevron look or the, the herringbone look that you see on, on a lot of cloths. So we're gonna do some variation with our towels here, but it all starts with following a pattern and uh, putting the strings in a specific order on shafts. And what we have here is we have different sets of shafts and when we flip a lever that you'll see later at the top, it will lift everything that is attached to that shaft. And when you lift, when you lift and lower different shafts in different orders, you create the pattern. So partly you get the pattern by how you string the strings through the heddles and then partly it's how you operate the pedals that ends up giving you the, the pattern in your cloth. So next step, we're gonna get all these, um, get all these heddles strung up.
The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, it's called slaying the reed, S-L-E-Y, like a sleigh ride. You're slaying the reed by putting all the strings through the reed, basically a giant metal comb, the length of your loom, or however long you need it, and the spacing of the slots in between the comb helps determine the density or the thickness of your fabric. The reed that I'm going to be using today is going to be a 12 dent reed. That means there are 12 slots per inch, and that will result in a, in a thicker sort of um, fabric if I use this cotton thread that I'm using, which is 8 over 2 cotton thread. So we're going to do that in 24 EPI, which means I'm going to put two strings in each slot, and that's going to give me the density of the fabric that I need. Once we get everything uh, threaded and slayed, the next step is tying it onto the front beam and the way we do that is we pull our strings over with our bar and we just use a sturdy cotton uh, heavy duty cotton yarn uh, I use this sort of uh, something you get from Joanne's fabric or, or Michael's and uh, we will uh, loop it through little groups of 24 uh, there remember they're two per slot so I'm using 24 threads, but there's actually 12 slots. So I'm going to be stringing the string through 12 or through six slots. So it's going to be right in the middle of six slots on one side, six slots on the other. And then we're going to pull that back to the beam. We're going to tighten it down. Tension is very important. You're going to be pulling that nice and tight and uh, making sure it's even all the way across the board. And once we have that tensioned, we'll be able to start putting in some of our placeholder threads and then we can actually start our weaving. Here we have uh, uh, successful tensioning and everything's lined up and the reed is swinging like it should and I'm able to beat the bar and it just it works. So we're gonna go ahead and start following the pattern here and what you're gonna see in the next series of videos is just a lot of weaving. Uh, this process took Oh, I want to say four solid days of four or five hours a night. So this is probably 20 hours of work you're going to see in the next, next few minutes. Once you're done, uh, you can actually 
uh, if you're going to do another set of towels in the same pattern, you can save yourself five or six hours of work if you tie on to the last, um, uh, the last strings. Uh, when you have your last warp on there and you still have some, it's important to tie up your reed, get it out of the way, and then you can actually tie on a new warp and then pull it back through everything and you don't have to do all that tedious work that you saw at the beginning again. I'm going to make another set of towels with similar patterns with the same heddles in yellow and cream. So sort of a gold and cream next, which was the original color of the pattern. And uh, I don't want to have to redo this. So as I'm cutting these off, you'll see that I'm tying them in loops so that they can hold the place without getting pulled back through and, and losing my place. So we're going to go ahead and get all that tied up before we move on to the next step. Next your towels are all going to be held together because you you wove them on the same loom you have one big long piece of cloth but if you notice I've got these white strings in between each one uh, and that's a cut line that's what we call a cut line and the cut line is where you're going to cut your towels apart later but you can't cut that until you make sure that it can't unravel and the next step that we have to do is we actually have to come in here and do a, a hemline and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a zigzag stitch in between each of these towels uh, between the edges of the cut line so that I can cut these and not have it unravel and we're going to go ahead and do that now let's get the zigzag stitch sewn up on the sewing machine and uh, then we can cut our towels apart for the next step. This last step is actually going to be hemming the towels. Uh, if you look at any good tea towel, you're going to see that the edge is actually folded over on itself twice and sewn straight across. Um, you might have a fancier stitch depending on how fancy the towels are, but that's what we do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to trim this a little bit, and then we're going to line up our uh, we're going to line up our stripes, and we're going to steam these over with a nice hot iron uh, on cotton linen 
setting and then we're going to line them up again, fold them over again. So we're going to hide that zigzag stitch that we just did with a straight stitch by steaming this, folding it over, pinning it, and sewing it. And then once we're done with that, we're going to clean up the strings and the next step will be washing. Johnny boy, put your hat back on. Now you're out there on your own. Johnny boy, you got a one way to get a ride. Going south to find a home. Yeah. Where hummingbirds are flying in the sky. The rains are coming true. A magic place where you can count the stars. Just lay down in the middle of the night. Look up to the sky. Next, we're just going to chuck this in the washer. Uh, we're going to put this on cold water with just a little bit of detergent. We're going to set it on a delicate setting, making sure that we haven't used any bleach in the last cycle. Uh, that would be a disaster. And we're just going to wash it on gentle. And then we're going to throw it in the dryer. And we're going to dry it on low. And our towels are going to be ready to go. Again, the towels go into the dryer on low heat or fluff. Uh, you just throw them in there and run them for a half hour until they dry off. And then when you pull them out, you can iron them and they'll be all ready to go. And what this step does, it's, it's the last sort of finishing for your weaving. When you make the weave, it's very loose, especially if you're using some sort of wool, but, but cotton especially. Cotton shrinks. So you actually need to shrink these down to get that denser uh, tea towel feel uh, and all of the cotton thread and, and the, the uh, fibers will bind together and shrink down and then you'll have a tea towel that's ready to go, ready to use. Thanks for watching today. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be notified when we release new videos. And we hope you really enjoyed seeing this little clip of our homestead experience and that we may have inspired you to do the same. Thanks a bunch. God bless.